Hey, brother! Ben, you know, Beauty and the Beast used to not make sense. But then they went and ruined it with the live action and filled in all of the plot holes. Ben, what are theorists like us to do without plot holes? But there are some things unexplained, like how can LeFou know what je ne sais quoi means but can't spell Gaston? And what does taking your lumps mean? And what, what is a paragon? No, no, I'm afraid there is still plenty that doesn't make sense in Beauty and the Beast. But today, we're going to explain all of that. So since the new Beauty and the Beast has come out, we've listened to the soundtrack, like, a lot. And we had a bit of a controversy arise during the Gaston song when we realized that everyone here thought taking your lumps meant something different. Every guy here'd love to be you, Gaston, hey! even when taking your lumps. One thought was that it meant, like, lumps in your throat, like if you were sick with, like, strep throat or something. So people would want to be you even if you were sick or even if they were taking care of you while you were sick. Personally, I thought it was like sugar and tea, like how many lumps would you like? So like they wanted to be him even when he was bossing them around and making them get him stuff. Mrs. Potts even uses lumps in this way during Be Our Guest. Is it one lump or two? But it turns out the actual meaning is punches, like receiving a punch from you which would result in you having a lump. More specifically, the phrase taking your lumps means accepting punishment you feel you deserve without complaining about it. So essentially, LeFou is actually saying that the men in town want to be like Gaston even when he is physically punching them, which I guess they feel like they deserve. I gotta say, this is a weird town. Like, what a bunch of drips. Bunch of what now? The rest is all drips. Yeah, I've never called someone a drip before, but apparently drips are weak or ineffectual people. Smooth move, LeFou, calling everyone in the bar a weak and ineffectual person as you try and convince them to sing about how great this other guy is. Man, this is a weird town. Although actually Josh Gad's LeFou seems to have learned this lesson because he drops this line from the song altogether and instead throughout the song you can see him paying the other bar patrons to sing along. So I guess maybe they don't actually think he's perfect, a pure paragon. Sorry, was that is that paragon or par paragod? I, I swear sometimes I hear a D at the end of this verse. But what I love about language is that I was still basically able to infer the correct meaning just with the completely definition. Like I was like, so par a god? Like he's like almost as perfect as a god? But it's not para god, it's para gone, which I didn't really know what that was. Like I assumed maybe like a very many sided, nice looking polygon, but like how many sides is para and how many sides does Gaston even have? I mean, as far as I can tell, it's just the handsome side. Or really more like it's just the one chauvinistic, egocentric, arrogant side. But to be clear, para gone is actually just used to describe a very nearly flawless person person and was originally used by gold prospectors to determine whether something was good gold or bad gold. Which, bad gold? How, what is, how do you have bad gold? On the other hand, a phrase used to describe how extremely ordinary a group of people is, is Tom, Dick, or Harry. As in, pff, any Tom, Dick, or Harry could figure that out. A variation of that phrase also gets thrown into the Gaston song as Tom, Dick, or Stanley. You might think LeFou was actually just telling you the names of these three random barmen, but the joke is that he has to, on the fly, change the last one to Stanley so that it will rhyme with manly. Josh Gad does a really good job with this in the live action where you can like hear him searching for a right rhyming word like Stanley? And speaking of Josh Gad, this isn't the only place in the movie where his character adds new lines to a song. In the opening song about Belle, Gaston says, Belle is the prettiest girl in town. She's the only one who gives me that sense of... And LeFou fills in... Je ne sais quoi? Which Gaston replies, I don't know what that means. The irony of which is that je ne sais quoi means I don't know what. So Gaston doesn't know what I don't know what means. Which is super clever if you ask me, but it doesn't just mean I don't know. Je ne sais quoi is often used to describe how something is undescribable. For example, I would say my hair has a certain je ne sais quoi about it. Or should I say je ne sais quoi, am I right? But honestly, the most surprising thing about that scene isn't that Gaston doesn't know what je ne sais quoi means, it's that LeFou does, and yet also does not know how to spell Gaston during the Gaston song. Equally surprising is that despite Gaston's lack of interest in culture and the arts, he actually does quote Shakespeare during the mod. Song. Your courage to the, sticking place. the 
phrase, screw your courage to the sticking place, is actually from Macbeth. And what's particularly great about this line is that, you know when you read Shakespeare and you're like, nobody talks like this, I swear he is making this stuff up. No one, no, why do we need to know this? We've all been there. Miss Price from ninth grade, if you're watching this, I'll have you know that it has not yet come in handy that I know the four places in Romeo and Juliet that Queen Elizabeth is referenced. I swear, some people just read way too much into things. By the way, did you guys know that Boo is the witch? Anyway, when it comes to the sticking place, you would be right to feel that way because Shakespeare is actually credited with making up this line. And yet, despite it actually being made up, it's still pretty easy to infer the meaning from it, which is summon the courage necessary required to kill the beast and stick it to that place. Or in the case of Macbeth, to kill Duncan. The point is, Gaston has read some Shakespeare, so he's not lying to Belle when he says, you know, books. I mean, if Gaston had just been more open about his love of Shakespeare, the entire crisis might have been averted. I mean, it is literally what Belle and the Beast bond over later in the movie, and what she's reading in the opening scene in this version is Romeo and Juliet. That's the two lovers in Fair Verona. But I'm impressed with Gaston. I mean, not just for having read Shakespeare, but because based on the sounds of his diet, I'm surprised he doesn't spend a majority of his day hard-boiling and then eating eggs. And I was a lad, I ate four dozen eggs every morning to help me get large. Four dozen eggs? That's 48 eggs. Do you know how many eggs 48 eggs is? It's 48 eggs. And he must be spending a fortune on eggs. I mean, the other lady can't even afford six. I need six eggs. That's too expensive. And are the six eggs just for her? I mean, I am personally content with three, and I'm a pretty big guy. Does, does anyone in this town eat anything but eggs? This is a weird town. In fairness to Gaston, eggs are a great source of protein, and he is very muscular, but uh, I have run some numbers here, and I have to tell you, 48 eggs a day is uh, still not that healthy. 48 eggs is roughly 3,744 calories, 240 grams of fat, 288 grams of protein, and 28 carbs. And if that seems high, that's because it is. For fun, I looked up the suggested daily intake for a like 200 pound bodybuilder, which I'm guessing is what Gaston roughly is, and here's where he comes in at. Calorie-wise, it suggested 3,840, so he's actually okay there. But fat-wise, he's a solid 130 grams over. Protein-wise, he's 120 grams over. And most off the mark, carb-wise, he is 540 grams under. But hey, you know what they say, bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? And what's worse is that's only four dozen eggs. Gaston goes on to say that as an adult, he eats five dozen eggs every day. So you can only imagine how much worse all of the numbers get when you add 12 more eggs. And that's his daily intake. If he eats nothing else, is all he eat eggs and 60, like how, how could you fit 60 eggs inside you? Like, raise your hand if you want to see Ben and I do the 60 egg challenge, huh? Please don't. So there you go, Ben. A lesson on Shakespeare, etymology, and the nutritional value of eggs. 60 eggs. That's exactly why you clicked on this video, right? But Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what are some other odd lines from Beauty and the Beast that maybe you didn't understand? Maybe we can all help each other out down in the towel section below. These socks are amazing. Tell you what, if we were going to eat 60 eggs, I would definitely need to make sure I was wearing my psych level as high tank top, available for order now at dftba.com. But guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Beauty and the Beast videos from us. If you want to see why the animated version of Beauty and the Beast makes no sense, you can check out this video right here. And if you want to find out what book Belle is reading in that version, you can check this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.